Hello Finlanders, welcome to the channel. I'm Daniel. Hopefully you like today's video. We're just gonna give you a little tour around the combine today. Some of you farming folk know exactly what you're doing with a combine. And some people have never been near a combine in their life. So we're just gonna teach you, teach you how it works really. So if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to subscribe, give us a like, leave us a comment, say hello. Keep watching for more machinery and farming videos every Monday and Wednesday. Are you filming? Yeah, just filming the dog. Dilexium 480 Evo, 2003. That's my better hand. We were going to upgrade to a 580, but my friend Matthew Golden, if he's watching, he bought that combine. He outbid me. If we went to the next combine up, Dad would then need a trailer monkey to keep up with the combine. How many acres have you got? It's over 500. So in terms of farm size, is that not that much? No, not really. I mean, this combine should do 1,500 to 2,000 acres every year. My ideal combine. I love it. <laughs> it was my favourite place to be on the whole farm. Sat in there. Now the air conditioning is fixed. Yeah, this is the business end of the combine. The header, the cutter bar, whichever you want to call it. Wait, um, which bit's the header? Is the whole thing the header? The whole thing's the header, yeah. Yeah, the whole thing's the header. You start off with the lifters. You've got lifters there that just run along the floor. Yep. They lift the crop if it's laid flat, if it's lodged. They call it lodging falling over now that now the heads of the wheat is really fat and heavy mm -hmm. the stalk's dead so it can yeah bend. fall over and you've got these uh the knife sections that do all the cutting and uh and the, the reel here so the reel pulls it into the knife and also at the same time throws it into the auger there which then brings it from the outside the corn the rape whatever from the outside and into the trunk that's running along the, along, along the floor well, just off the floor, so mm -hmm. about four inches off the floor. It would be about here somewhere, I should think. Yeah. And they go, and it goes like that. At a hell of a rate. Hello, Greya. Oh, good, good dog, you two were. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so basically, just um, the knife goes backwards and forwards. It's like a reciprocating knife. Yeah. And as the sale is, <laughs> some people. Uh, should we just off. wait a minute? Hang on. <laughs> Give us a sec. Hello. Hello, Mimi. Oh, and again. <laughs> Never work with children or animals. Oh, animals. Hello. Hello. Or grumpy granddads, don't or they say? Granddads. It looks quite complicated, but it's it, not. It really isn't. Yeah. And then the big auger takes everything to the middle of the combine, then it goes in. The smoother you can get stuff flowing into the combine at the front here, the smoother it goes through the combine at the back. Which we'll go have a look at, shall we? Yeah. Inside here is just basically a big trunk that feeds the combine. The chains in there that flatten the crop down and then pull it back up. Call that the first bit the accelerator that just yet again does more smoothing out mm -hmm. and flattening off. And then behind that with the rasp bars on there, they're called rasp bars, that does all the thrashing. You can open and close the gap in the in inside there, mm -hmm. depending on what crop you're in. If you're in beans or something, you have a wide gap because they thrash out and, and rape you have a fairly wide gap as well because all the thrashing in rape is done at the header. Wheat that's not quite fit takes a bit more thrashing out so you close the gap. What do you mean by thrashing? Like I had the, in my last video, when I had the head of wheat and I was doing that, Separating basically all it does them. is grab the, grab the head of wheat and just does that, rubs all the uh, grains out of the head. Okay. So after that, then it goes the straw and, and whatever grains left in goes into the rotors at the back there. And basically the rotors just sp spiral around and the, and the straw goes up and out the back of the combine. Yeah. But while it's doing it, it's also separating any grain that's left in the straw out and taking the straw out of the back of the combine. Very simple, really. Uh, high output, hybrid combine. Should we have a look around the back? Yeah, it can be. This is a grain pan. So is this the bit you were just saying about? Yeah. So these things, these rasp bars come round mm -hmm. and you've got all this grid here. Oh. You can see how tight a gap that is. Yeah. It's fairly well open there at the minute. This is spinning a lot faster than the grain's coming in. Mm -hmm. And it just rubs it out. So just like this, rubs yeah. all the grain out. 
and then shoots all the straw back into the rotors. There's another, uh, this here is another kind of like an auger, but crossways. And all that does is flick the straw and grain and stuff that not fell through this into the rotors. Yeah, all that does is just funnel the straw to each rover. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't jam up in there. I'm, I'm assuming when they were designing these things, they, they had some jam up problems. Then you get to the rotors, and this is where the rotors start. Look. So yeah, you've got the rotors. The rotors now start here and get all the way to the back of the combine. Right. So from here to the back. And all they're trying to do is get the straw out of the back of the combine. Grain should have all been thrashed out in the drum. Mm -hmm. But there'll still be some straw left in it. And then you can see all the gaps and holes in here mm -hmm. and that lets even more grain out okay but it will also let broken straw out as well so you've got another big grain pan under here we call it any grain and straw and stuff falls on there and goes right to the front of the combine underneath all this lot yeah and back onto the grain pan at the front you've got a panting dog <laughs> sit oh Good dog. well done you've got a big grain pan, it's just doing this basically. Yeah. It's got edges on like this. It just goes like that all the way along. Mm -hmm. And where it shakes backwards and forwards, it chucks the grain over, chucks the grain over, chucks the grain over. Yeah. So it all comes back onto the sieves. And under here, there's what we call frog mouth sieves. Right. And they're doing that as well. Yeah. There's two, a top sieve and a bottom sieve. Yeah. So the top sieve generally take most of the trash out. You can close them up so the grain falls through and the little bits of straw come out the back. Mm -hmm. You can just about see in there, I think, maybe. And there's your top sieve. Let me see if I can point over the top of you. Mm. Uh, this. <laughs> this is yep. your grain, grain, your sieve. So I can shut them up and 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 uh, flatten them off like this, so the grain just goes over and then falls back in. Because mm -hmm. I've also got massive big fans underneath that blow. In theory, all of the little bits of straw out the back of the combine, so just enough to blow the straw out, but hopefully the grain's a bit heavier. Yeah. That falls through the sieves. And then obviously the straw comes out the back of the combine here. You've got a massive straw chopper in inside here. There's a big straw chopper if I want to chop the straw. Mm -hmm. But we like the straw, so the straw just comes out the back of these rotors. Look. See the, you can see the rotors yeah. better now, can't you? Yeah, you can. When you've got the straw chopper involved, you obviously need to spread the straw over the whole 25 foot cut <clears throat> and that's what these do but it's not so once the uh, grain's gone onto the grain pan or onto the onto the sieve and it falls through the sieve the top sieve i think lets all the all the grain through i gotta remember it's been a year since i've done it <laughs> um i know the bottom sieve if you have it wide open it lets all the all the trashy bits no if you have it closed up it lets all the trashy bits come over that need re uh re thrashing mm -hmm. come up this auger Go across and back into the drum, mm -hmm. and then the top sieve. Or is it the bottom sieve? I can't remember. <laughs> Any, which way round it is? Somebody will uh, tell me which way round it is. I've got to look in. I always have to look in the book before I start and go right. This bit does that bit. This <laughs> bit does that bit. I'd love to go on a uh, combine course. If anyone's got any combine courses to teach me how to drive a combine properly, I just <laughs> self. I'm self-taught, or well, Dad's taught me a little bit, and. Uh, he's taught himself. So. Are, you, are you guys basically just winging it? Pretty much, yeah. We don't really seem to do a too bad a job and and we get good straw quality out of the back of this machine and we get not many losses. So we do all right, but I just got to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, once, once the grain's falling through the sieves, it goes up this auger here and then it will go into the tank. Which is that big thing there. This is the tank, yeah. Holds about eight tonne, I think. So uh, two Phillips and Dad, and he and he's got sixteen, well, he's got probably seventeen ton on a on a trailer load. So it work, works a treat. Dad, I, by the time Dad always gets back to me, I'm nearly full anyway. So and this all controls the rotor speed. Uh, is this the rotors or is this a drum? I can't remember. That's the yeah. This all controls the drum. This is all drum speed and everything. So you can speed the drum up and slow it down. You can alter the gap, close the gap. Uh, the sieves you can open them up or close them down. This is where the big fans are that blow through the sieves. Mm -hmm. If you look down there, you can see this is a ginormous fan. Oh, yeah. There's three of them across there. Mm -hmm. And they blow air across the sieves. So they blow all the trash out of the back of the combine, hopefully, and, and um, leave the grain to fall through the sieves. So you can do everything you like with them. Speed the fans up. 
expand up to slow them down. You can alter the angle of the wind as well. You can speed the rotors up on this machine. What do you got there? Think you can manage to get out there? <laughs> you go first. Your brakes was not here. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try this. Do 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 do. Should have put my phone down. Oh my god. So before we get to the grain tank, we might as well just have a look at the engine. Let's do that. And she's a whopper. It's a big old cat, six cylinder, turbo six cylinder. I don't know what it is, probably about 15 litres or something like that. As you can see, that's the radiator for it. <laughs> so it's a fair size, isn't it? Little radiator bit. and uh, this is the air filter for it. So this is the biggest engine we've got on the farm. I think it's about 400, 405 horsepower. I can tell you, horsepower, 400. Yeah. I don't know whether it's any more with these uh, Evo models or not. So Ben Burgess turn up at the most inappropriate times when <laughs> we're sitting here talking classes. Yeah, so she's, she's, she's you right? <laughs> I was going to say, should we heckle him a bit? Yeah. Loser! Sh should we hide? <laughs> yeah, to hide in the grain tank. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, this basically powers everything on the whole combine. Um, hydraulic output, gearbox on the side there, and then hydraulics. To the to the final drives at the front um pretty simple pretty complicated um <laughs> which makes no sense which makes no sense <laughs> at all and uh hopefully yeah we'll have a new class delivered this uh <laughs> this time next week <laughs> and um it'll all be good let me see <laughs> it's gone around the back here it's looking for you nothing to see here joe nothing to see here new class. <laughs> yeah joe <Jeff. laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm getting way too fast. What are you doing? You'll be out there on top of the rotors. <laughs> Told you I'm getting too fast for this. So there's the rotors. Right. And you can see the grain town underneath it. You know when I showed you the auger down there and I said that comes up from the grain tank? Yeah. You've got another, another auger there that fills the top of the combiner. Mm -hmm. I've got two sensors there that I've got a window so I can see what the sample's like. Mm -hmm. I've also got another chute there that will shoot it straight down into my hand so I can see what the sample's like. Mm -hmm. Two sensors there to tell me when I'm 70% full and then I'm 100% full. Mm -hmm. I moved them up last year just to get a bit more capacity. <laughs> And then Grumpy Granddad was like, you're overflowing, you've got cab corn, you've got cab corn going on. Two augers that shoot it out the side, they weren't timed up properly when we got it. So it was, they're supposed to go alternate, one goes, one goes, one goes like that. Right. And they're both going at the same time. Right, okay. So it was un unloading at a hell of a rate. It was great, but poor old Grumpy Granddad couldn't keep up with the trailer. Was he having kittens? Yeah. So um, once we figured out that, that it comes out at a more respectable pace now, and then out of the unloaded auger and into Grumpy Granddad's trailer. Uh, I've got a computer there that just basically controls everything. So my Cebus monitor, which is a bit covered in dust at the minute. I can basically set the combine up from from the Cebus monitor. I can tell it what what crops and you know, you know, what crops I'm in, wheat, rye, winter barley, summer barley, I think they mean spring barley, oats, rice, and, I, and it'll set the combine up. I can leave my information stored in there, how I like the combine set up, if it's wet wheat or dry wheat or whatever, I can set it up for two different scenarios. And yeah, just go at it really. Got radio, got fridge. Like last year, I left a muffin in there. Uh. <laughs> Oh, that must have been rang. No, I still had it. It was good. Did you? No, actually? I didn't. <laughs> um, actually but I did. Actually, I did headbutt it the other day, <laughs> the other week. So it's got a nice dent of your head in it. Yeah, no, it's busted, so that falls off. But I am so looking forward to putting my super sparrow drink bowl <laughs> in there. I think I've used a plastic bottle once since I've had this. So go on our links on our descriptions. <laughs> They're mega, aren't they? Yeah, they are good. That's oh, good. look at that. It's in there, a tree, and there's room for two, and luckily enough, I have two. Just gonna run it for a second. Yeah, just a quick little run up really, because uh, we changed all them belts and stuff and 
I don't want to do too much more until I start buttoning it back up and putting the panels back on. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to watch these videos in the screen now. Cheers, guys.